Okay, so moving on to ledges. If we take this box here and duplicate it, and then we scale it a little bit, so we have something to walk on. I'm also going to duplicate this one once more and then change the angle a little bit and once more. And once more. So I hope you can see where I'm going with this. So we walk off to one of these. We can move up and down, and that seems to be working pretty nicely. You might have some areas in your level where you don't want your player to walk up onto, like this one, for example. But as it is right now, we can walk on any angled surfaces. And that might not be what you want. So in this case, maybe you want the player to slide down if they try to stand on it. So let's try and implement that. So for that, we're going to need some kind of variable to keep our maximum slope, floor slope. So let's call that max slope which is going to be an angle and for now we're just going to set this to 35 so the angle we can get by extracting the impact normal here and doing a dot product against a up vector so we can do a dot product here let's move this one down here then make a, an up vector like this. So in order to get the angle, we are going to get the A cosinus in degrees. That's going to give us our angle. And then we want this to be less than our max angle or max slope. <clears throat> So let's move this a little bit further over. Even more. And then add another branch here. And then say only if this is true, then we want to be able to walk or adjust. And if this is not true, then we actually want to set this falling to be true. Okay. So if we hit play, we can see we can actually get quite a bit up, but then we're not able to walk on it. And same with this one, we're actually able to get pretty far up on this. If we just walk, and then we're going to slide down. This one is actually behaving pretty well. So this ends up looking like we, we can kind of run up, get a little speed and almost reach the top, almost. But that again might not what we want our player to be able to do. So I'm gonna add in, I guess there are a lot of ways to solve this, but I decided to add in a movement multiplier
which per default is going to be one. So anywhere you will have movement applied to your character in game, you want to uh, multiply this into your movement vector. So right now I only have this trackpad movement where I move my player. I'm going to only add it in here. But in case you have different locomotion schemes, then you want to multiply this in here. So for default, this is going to be a one. So what we want to do is to say if we have a valid surface here, then we want to make sure that this movement multiplier gets set to one pretty fast. And just to not make things snap completely, we're going to make a, an F interp here. So the target is going to be one and the current is going to be whatever it is right now. And let's say pretty fast, 30. So let's copy this stuff here and say if we hit that slope that we can't walk on and we are technically falling, then we want to set this to be 0 0.1 or something fairly slow and then interrupt that maybe maybe a little bit slower let's say 15 so as you can see now we can actually not get very far up on these On this one we can get up and if we pass all over to the next one we're just going to start sliding down Okay. So I guess that is more or less uh, what we can do with uh, slope walking or walking on things like this. So as you notice, we have quite a bit of jumping up and down when we walk on stairs. So in case you want a perfectly smooth um, walking behavior on something like this these pair of stairs here, then you might want to implement or add a kind of slopey collision volume to this. But that is something I will not cover in this video, but you can try and, and do yourself. So I'm just going to leave this video here with a kind of a primer for the next video. And that is going to be about what happens when we don't move? I'm just gonna stand over here. So when we don't move in, in room scale or in, in the world, but we kind of bounce up and down in in room scale. So you can see there's a little bit of a lag on now. And it might not seem very much. <coughs> But rest assured, if you're wearing the headset, then you can actually tell that it's kind of uh, lagging a little bit behind. And that is obviously happening because we have this interp running here. So we need a way of finding out if we should use an interp or not. So that is the topic for the next video. So stay tuned and thank you for watching.